Welcome back to Go Simple Tax, where today I'm looking at the five self-assessment deadlines and important dates that you need to be aware of. And I'm going to be explaining what you need to do in order to meet these deadlines so that you don't fall foul of the rules and incur any penalties. Before we get started, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more helpful tax content. Now, our first deadline is the registration deadline, which falls on the 5th of October that follows the tax year you need to register for, which means if I had income that I started receiving in December 2023 that needs to be reported, that would fall into the 23-24 tax year and I would need to register for self-assessment by the 5th of October 2024 to ensure that I met the deadline. This one could apply to anyone who needs to complete a self-assessment tax return, but most commonly it will be for first-time self-employed individuals individuals and previously self-employed individuals, which is where you've closed down or paused your self-employment for a period of time, but have now started trading again. If you are first time self-employed and have never completed a self-assessment tax return, you're going to need to register for self-assessment online, wait for your 10 digit UTR number to arrive in the post, and then use that UTR number to set up your account for self-assessments online service. For those who have already been registered for self-employment in the past and are now re-registering, you'll need to complete form CWF1 to reactivate your account. And finally, for everyone else, which covers anyone who has income that needs reporting that isn't from self-employment, you'll need to complete form SA1. This covers reasons for registration, including income from employment, income from pensions, interest from savings, rental income, employment benefits, and income from a trust. The second important date to be aware of is the 6th of April, which marks the first day of the new tax year, which then runs through to the 5th of April the following year. This is an important date to be aware of, as it will usually bring with it changes to tax regulation and personal allowances that have previously been announced as even when they get announced in the months and years prior, the changes tend to have an effective date of the 6th of April. A few tips as you head into a new tax year are to organise early, Given that the 6th of April marks the start of a new tax year, that also means the ending of the previous tax year, which means you can start getting your records ready and calculating your profit figure ahead of submission to HMRC. You should also research additional expenses and allowances that you might be able to claim, which is going to reduce your profit figure and therefore your tax payable to HMRC. And where applicable, take the time to check and understand your new tax code. Your tax code tells employers how much tax to deduct from your pay. So this one is more likely to impact those with employment. It's primarily based on your personal allowance, which is currently £12,570. It then factors in things like additional allowance that you may have had gifted to you from a spouse or civil partner, or that you may have gifted to them, and any tax debts from previous years being collected through your tax code. The third deadline to be aware of for self-assessment is the second payment on account deadline, which requires anyone who is required to make a payment on account to do so by the 31st of July. Now, the reason I say second payment on account is because the first payment is actually made by the end of January. A payment on account will usually be required for anyone who has a self-assessment tax liability exceeding £1,000 unless you've paid more than 80% of your tax bill at source, which generally means means through PAYE. The payment on account is based on the income tax bill from the previous year and requires the individual to pay 50% of that liability towards the following year's bill. The idea of the payment on account system is to ensure the taxpayer isn't left with the full bill come the payment deadline. And because you make two payments on account both equaling 50% of the previous year's liability, providing your tax liability stays the same in the following year, you would have actually already paid this via your payments on account. Now, in reality, of course, an individual's tax liability is rarely the same from year to year. So where it does fluctuate, this is dealt with by a balancing payment 
or refund. If the tax liability in the subsequent year is lower, then a refund is issued to the taxpayer. If the tax liability is higher, then a balancing payment is due from the taxpayer. There are a number of ways to make a payment on account, including by check, by using HMRC's online portal to make a debit or credit card payment, or via bank transfer. The next deadline falls on the 31st of October. This is the filing deadline for paper returns. Filing online is of course the most common method, but in 2024 over 335,000 returns were submitted in paper form. A lot of the time this is because the individual isn't able to meet the requirements to open an online account, which tends to be caused by a lack of acceptable photo ID. It's worth noting that this deadline is earlier than that for online submissions, so if you are able to register for an online account, then you could technically miss the paper deadline and still submit your return online before the online submission deadline to avoid a penalty. This method of submission is set to be phased out over time. The fifth and final date to be aware of is actually a double deadline. This is the 31st of January, which represents the deadline for online submission of the self-assessment tax return and the payment deadline for any tax still owing. First, the submission deadline. In order to avoid an automatic £100 penalty, your return must be received by HMRC before midnight on the 31st of January following the end of the tax year. So if I had income that needs reporting from September 2022, that falls into the 22-23 tax year and I would need to submit my return online no later than the 31st of January 2024. As you can imagine, a huge amount of taxpayers leave their returns until the last minute, which means demand on HMRC phone lines and support teams skyrockets in the month of January. If you want to get ahead of the curve and enjoy easier access to HMRC's team, should you need them, it's best to get your returns submitted ahead of time. Submission is possible as soon as the tax year closes, so you should be able to submit a return from the 6th of April. As for the payment deadline, which also sits on the 31st of January at midnight, you will need to pay any tax liability from the previous tax year, less any payments on account that you've made towards it. This is known as a balancing payment, which I briefly mentioned earlier. Just remember, you may also need to make your first payment on account towards the following year's liability by the 31st of January as well. Now, in relation to all of these deadlines, failure to meet them will often result in penalties being issued. HMRC will only waive penalties in rare situations where you can provide them with a reasonable excuse. Reasonable excuses might include the death of a close family member shortly before a deadline, an unexpected hospital stay that prevented you from dealing with your tax affairs, your computer or software failing whilst you were preparing your online return, or a fire or flood that prevented you from completing your tax return amongst a few others. As you can see, these excuses are unlikely to apply in most situations, and just know where they do, you may be asked to provide supporting evidence. A much easier way to avoid penalties is to plan ahead and submit your tax return early. Thank you for watching. See you next time.